Greetings, I'm DK Rosta. Welcome back to the TTT News. As we hurtle forward with technology in this time and place, where does our culture, history and the preservation of such factor in? It is time to go in-depth on that question with Director of the Scarborough Rockley Bay 1677 Research Project, Dr. Levis Guy Obiakor. Hello, Dr. Levis, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Really looking forward to having this conversation, and uh, hopefully we get a, a few of my personal questions in as well. But I'm wondering, though, what is the Rockley Bay 1677 Research Project? Um, this project was born out of the battle of Rootcliffe Bay in Rockley Bay, Tobago. That is the Scarborough Harbor, the Scarborough Port on the 3rd of March in 1677. That battle was one of the fiercest battles in the Western Hemisphere because we had between 2,500 people uh, to 3,000 people who perished in that battle in the Scarborough Harbor. So why is it we don't hear more about an, an incident, an event of, of such magnitude? I think history has a way of probably dissolving, well, I'm not a historian by discipline. I am an international lawyer. I have a um, PhD in international law and politics. So therefore, you know, I wouldn't have a lot of background on this particular issue. But what I can say is that it's part of the history and culture of Tobago. And that is why I am pushing forward with this particular project. And in this project, what are some of the artifacts being found as the project is going on? Well, the, the majority of the artifacts are wooden objects, clay objects, metal objects. And um, what we are trying to do is to preserve these, these items. Particularly, of particular interest is a bellamine jar, which is about uh, 14 inches high with escuchans around it. It's a clay jar. And the jar is in pristine condition. Uh, the three great commanders, there is Joshua, David, and Alexander. That's emblazoned on the side of this um, clay jar. And you say that you're working to make sure that this thing, that the project happens, it is, is taking place and is almost a passion project as well. But in terms of your role, where, where does your role see you within the project? I um, My role is the director of the project to ensure that the artifacts, the divers go down and that we, when we retrieve the artifacts, they are catalogued and presently return to the ocean just as we've taken them out to ensure that I have a relationship with the universities. There are three major universities involved, which is Texas A&M, the University of Connecticut, and the University of Wales. And that makes me want to ask about the curation of these things as they are found. Is it that they're going to be stored? You said take them back to the water. What is the, is there a long-term goal? What, what, what can we expect coming out of the project? This is where the project is stored right now. And that is, that is of great concern to me and the professors because we have no funding to take the project forward. So right now we are hoping that the Tobago House of Assembly would step in and help us to do that part of the project. Initially, we had a, um, a conservator, her name was Dr. Eleonora Piva, who was very interested in coming to Tobago. The US Embassy, the um, Ambassador's Cultural Fund, they gave us $3 million to do the project. But the caveat with that is that they indicated that the THA must hire a conservator. And with that, the conservator was lost. Uh, the THA took quite a, a, a long time to decide whether or not the project will go forward. And she had to take another project in Norway. And answer so the person who says, but Dr. Obiakor, let the past stay in the past. Was it, was, why is a project of this nature so important? 
Tobago's history, the culture, is linked to that project. Tobago is the island that has changed hands 33 times. And with that, we have in Tobago a history that is, it's colored. It's colored with the Dutch, the Coronians, the Spanish, the French, the English. And that needs to be explored, particularly now as Tobago is taking on tourism as a part of the island's product that is gonna be sold to the world. I think it's important that we explore the, the, the possibilities that lie with the um, archaeo tourism as it is called. So I'm hoping that that goes forward. And particularly my particular interest is for the students, for the young people to learn about the past and the beautiful objects that have been found in the rock, Rocky Bay Harbor. And then I think sometimes too, learning about things like this also help explain certain tendencies, certain uh, issues in terms of saying, okay, well, I have this aesthetic. I'm not sure, I don't know if it's intuitive, whether or not it's something that's generational. And also looking at the fact that seeing that where we come from, this, is, this can offer a, an idea of the direction that we're going in a true, true manifestation of Sankofa, as it were, and even some praxis in terms of thinking about where we are, looking at actions, and then reflecting on them in terms of going forward. Do you see that tying in with it as well? Yes, I do. I see it tied into it because we, I am hoping that the Division of Education takes an active role in this sort of project because it does help with the young people. As a matter of fact, I had a project going with the Scarborough Harbor project and when the project stalled, I used my own personal funds to allow this project to go forward. So I started doing for the past six years, a project out of this 1677 Rocky Bay research called Oceans and Technology, a Sea of Learning. So as part of that project, we did a lot of history, social studies, science, technology. So that, from that, in that aspect, I'm hoping that um, we can explore this historical and cultural aspect that you are discussing. And it makes me think it remains, reminds me of the pedagogy of the oppressed in terms of like, if we imbue learning with something that resonates with us, it is quite possible that that learning may last a little longer. But we continue the conversation. When we return, we are speaking about the Scarborough Rockley Bay or Rocky Bay 1677 research project. Stay with us. We return with more. Welcome back. We are going in-depth on the Scarborough Rockley Bay 1677 Research Project with Director Dr. Levis Guy Obiakor. Now, Doctor, it seems as though you one of the things you're doing is making sure we understand links and connections where originally we may be seeing none. There is a connection with the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Can you share some more details on this? Thank you. Well, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, also known as the Dutch Empire. So therefore, the, 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 the um, link with the Dutch was started with uh, the former ambassadors who were very interested because I volunteered in 2013 to put up a 4,800 square foot building, which is still on the um, Scarborough Harbor, on the port. So the Dutch, sponsored a library for that particular project because it was my hope that through this project that students will come through doing a, from the lecture series that we would have that would be appropriate for the students. Also, we are hoping that there was a lab that students can learn the basics of um, dendrochronology the basis of science that is part of the archaeological and the marine um, the marine aspect of it. And I'm hoping that these, the Dutch would continue to support us even as they've started with the lecture series that is ongoing. And speak a little more to the lecture series, please. 
Well, the lecture series started in November. We have 11 lectures. We have completed six. And um, let me just give you a little note on a couple of them. It's uh, the first one started with Professor Kum Bachvara, who is the lead professor on this project. And his lecture was on archaeology of a naval battle, Tobago 1677. We also had Dr. Rita Pemberton, uh, former chair of the Department of History at the University of the West Indies. She lectured on the Dutch colonial enterprise in the 17th century. We also had other lectures which were like floating forests, dendrochronology, and shipbuilding. The upcoming lecture is very special to me because um, when I was in high school at Bishops in Tobago, um, we had a trip to Trinidad and there was a particular um, issue of Caribbean beat and they did an article on the Jews in Curacao and Suriname. And I have followed up on the Jews in that part of the Caribbean and South America. And on Friday, Professor Aviva Benner would do the exception that proves the rule, Jews in the Dutch Caribbean. So this is where I think there's a foundation, there's a progression in the lecture series. And as you say that, you just make me think that you never know what is going to be the spark that is going to get someone learning, someone trying to find out more. So the onus would be on those who can to increase the scope of information that can be shared so that people can find their niche, find their passion project and help to monetize that. And this is not a bad thing, but because when you do what you love, it feels as though it's not work. But the next generation, preservation of our history, how do we tie those things in? Because I hear some of the things that you're saying and... Uh, you volunteered, you suggested, you're hoping. What are some of those incremental steps where we can turn it from a personality, your personality, to a policy, something that ensures that the next generation look at our history, say this is something of value worth preserving and we're going to help take up that mantle? Well, I would speak specifically for Tobago that I know, and you know, by extension, Trinidad. I think this, these historical events on the islands in the Republic, that must be taught from the primary school to the secondary school, at the secondary school level, where at that point, young people can make decisions. And with the, the, the um, summer program that I had, it was the Oceans and Technology. We exposed young people. For example, I looked at some of the, um, the photos that you showed, you saw young people with iPads. They were learning how to do 3D photography on one of the cannons. So I think that from these experiences, I speak of a personal experience, I speak of a passion, a, a passion and a spark that was ignited in me in high school and that I followed, not to that particular path, but the interest in history, the interest in what can be done to assist young people to go forward. And in terms of what can be done to go forward, please give us information. Who is the target audience for the upcoming, this, the next installment of the lecture series? How can people engage with it? That is on the website of the National Trust of Trinidad and Tobago. We have partnered, the Dutch Embassy has partnered with us. The Ministry of Culture in the Netherlands is also a partner. The Ministry of Culture in St. Martin and the Maritime Museum of Curacao is an also partners. And I should not forget the Tobago Library Services. They are part of this project. I've been trying to engage the um, Division of Education, but I was quite unsuccessful with that. However, the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, well, I heard that Antiquities is now added to the portfolio of the Division of Tourism. So I think it's a good thing, and I'm hoping that our new administration would be happy to follow through on some of the promises that were made in the last administration that were not fulfilled. And in terms of those hopes, I want to ask, not necessarily saying, okay, well, we're giving you a limitless amount of resources, but what are some of those 
uh, concrete things that you hope come out of it in terms of the amount of people who are engaged, uh, the types of persons who are engaged, interest that is sparked? What are some of those things that you're looking forward to to say, yes, this is worth it and I'm going to continue? The interest is to be engaged by the, those in authority to ensure that the material that's at the bottom of the Scarborough Harbor, they are excav excavated and taken to a conservatory where they can be preserved. That is my hope because I know from that point, they can be transferred to a museum. I'm hoping that I was hoping to have a museum constructed or have a museum actually a building refurbished to house these artifacts. Because in Tobago, there are lots of um, artifacts that are stored that are not cataloged and displayed. And I wonder how easy it would be to get an idea of monetary value, because it seems as though bottom line is what some people understand. Uh, and I draw an example from Belize, where archaeology, it seems to be a uh, subject or an issue that is a lot more lived because you have the Maya temples, people can see, okay, well, if I go into this field, this is something that is living and breathing. But looking at the fact that you spoke about archaeotourism and saying, okay, well, this is something that Tobago can say, okay, well, this, these are one of the offerings that we have. Do you think that is one of the ways to go about it so that people say, okay, well, eh, it might make some money, let's do it, even if they're not looking at it from the cultural aspect of it? Well, out of this whole project, out of history, I can see, you know, we look at it just being history taught. I remember there is one young man, uh, his name is Ashley Morris, who started coming to the project, and he's now employed at the uh, museum in Port of Spain. Actually, he's an employee of the National Trust, and he is being, he is engaged and engaging others in this particular process. So you have archaeology from this, you have the science of um, dendrochronology, you have other disciplines that really come out of this as it relates to maritime studies, you have law, we had one student who got a scholarship from the Japanese government to study this whole when artifacts are found, you know, to who, which country does it belong? These are some of the issues. You have law coming out of it, law of the sea. And um, this is what I'm hoping that would interest young people in the whole project. That would be form a part of, of interest in the process, the disciplines that come out of the whole um, project. And I'm really glad we got the, you got the opportunity to articulate and ventilate that because many people are asking, what is in it for me? So looking at these strange and disciplines that are intersectional and part of the project, we really thank you for that and giving us the information, reminding you the National Trust of Trinidad and the Tobago website for more information on this. Thank you, Dr. Levis Guy Obiakor. And on behalf of the entire news team, I'm DK Rosta. Thank you for joining.